Hey guys, welcome to the Knit Six channel. Uh, we have a very important guest this week. Uh, but first, before I introduce the guests, I want to introduce another member of the CCI Advisory Council. Um, hey, Rick, introduce yourself, please. Sure. Um, uh, Rick Bauer, um, been a member of the Advisory Council since the inaugural year. Um, so I guess that's what, seven years now or? Somewhere along the line, something I don't know what how long. At any rate, um, been in the industry now since 1988, so I'm the resident old guy, I think. Well, maybe not. John Gibbs probably has me there. Hey, but, stop! Uh, hey, stop pointing at, at old people. Just go ahead. And take it, it's your <laughs> so, um, I mean, I've I've worked in man almost every industry: government, large enterprise financial service provider um integrator gold partner premier partner for the whole deal um worked for ins for a long time too so that's uh you know some of you insers out there you know let's uh bring it back at any rate um so now here i am uh with these guys and trying to uh invoke change into our community and uh, make sure that we grow and stay relevant. Awesome. Thanks for joining this week, Rick. The next guest is a celebrity within Cisco. Um, <laughs> this guy is knowledgeable <laughs> in all things that uh, I remember at Cisco Live, um, <laughs> we were trying to help him out talking to a crowd. And this guy, he's like, uh, what is that guy from Family uh, Price is Right? Bob Barker with a microphone. This guy, he, he could do it all. I mean, um, very talented. So without further ado, Ryan Rose, please please say a few words about uh, you know what you do at Cisco and tell the folks who you are. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, first, thank you very much for, for having me. Um, uh, I'm, I'm Ryan Rose. Uh, I've been at Cisco since 2010. And um, for almost the entire time that I've been there, I've been supporting certifications in one form or another. Um, so originally I came in um, uh, supporting the uh, certification team uh, at Learning at Cisco. And in fact, if you took uh, C Voice 8, that was the very first course that I edited. Um, and so uh, after uh, years with Learning at Cisco, I've, I've moved over to DevNet. And now I'm supporting the new DevNet certification uh, program. Um, so uh, as my friends at Larry and Cisco say, uh, I can't get away from certifications. Um, and so uh, really happy to be here, really happy to be talking about DevNet and um, uh, eager to answer any questions that uh, you all might have. Hey, we have hey, questions. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, all of us, when I say all of us, people from the council, people in this, uh, in, in our group, in it six, right? We get filled with a lot of questions or asked a lot of questions on a uh, pretty much a daily basis, right? And it's, how do we get started at net, right? So I'm gonna throw a question at you and, and, and I want you to, to help us, you know, through plotting out how a person with no skills or even a seasoned vet that took, you know, computer science back in 1988, you know, uh, <laughs> How can they get started with DevNet? Do you need Python? If not, you know, how, how did we get started with the fundamental skills needed to be a DevNet engineer? Oh, um, uh, I am uh, Derek. I'm, I'm really happy to go over all of that. Um, I'll be going over probably a lot that's inside of the DevNet website. Um, because that is a really great place to start for anybody that's looking. Uh, and again, if you're uh, if you're a multi-year veteran who is coming from computer science, great. Uh, we have a place for you on DevNet. Um, if you think that Python is just a snake, we have a learning lab for you at DevNet. Um, so so it is uh, it's really a good place to start. So uh, if you if it's okay, I'll I'll share my screen and I'll jump into the website. Oh, great! Please. So this is the uh, this is actually the main DevNet website. Uh, you can reach it by going to developer.cisco.com, um, and it is a really great place for people that are looking to kind of find find their footing in this world. 
Um, uh, one of the things that I was asked to do when I was first hired at DevNet uh, was to come up with a descriptor of what I thought DevNet was. And uh, I got to say that uh, to me, DevNet itself is a really great place to start because this website has everything that you would need. Uh, if you're looking for training to get started, we have that. If you're looking for like the APIs or SDK information or documentation, so that way you can build something, we have that too. Um, but we also have uh, people whether they're dev advocates or code authors that are also on this site. Um, so whether it's that kind of like the training stuff or you're looking for tools or you're looking for anything uh, related to uh, development at Cisco, um, this is the place to come. And if it sounds good to everybody on the call, I feel like a really great place to go for people that are starting would be to go to the start now section that's on this on the front of this page. Is that easy? Wow, let's let's go. Let's show it. Yeah. And like me. <laughs> so um, uh, when you come to developer.cisco.com, the very first button that's here on the bottom left of this, on the on the left of this screen here is this rocket ship and it says start now. And start now is filled with a list of training that our dev advocates have put together to help people really get off the ground. Um, so for example, um, if you were brand new, like you've never touched a line of code in your life, like uh, again, you think like a REST API is something that people do on the weekends. Um, this is a really great place to start uh, because uh, here you, if, just by kind of opening up this drawer, here is four hours of training, eight total labs that we have that are just built to get you the basics and a little bit more on coding and APIs. So even if you don't even know what like REST stands for, um, or even what an API is, we actually walk you through it. Um, uh, uh, DevNet, our experts, our SMEs on our side, actually we sat down and created these courses. We put them in the order that we recommend that they're taken. And uh, again, this is four hours of training that kind of helps someone who has never touched the line of code. So if you were uh, even if you were coming uh, new to DevNet, new to coding, if you were a veteran at Cisco but have never moved into using APIs, this is a really great place to start. And you don't even need to go to the main page to come to this site. You can actually go to developer.cisco.com slash start now and you'll find all of these drawers here whether it's this one for coding and apis if you've never done if you've never done that or if you're coming from the software side and you don't have a background in networking but you'd like to start building apps or writing integration writing integrations on top of cisco technologies or networking technologies um we have we have a set of labs for that we have networking 101 um it's it i like to think that if you're a developer, you might not know how to implement subnetting, but you should know what subnetting is. And so this is a great set of labs that we have uh, if you're coming for more of that software space, but you need to have a background on the hardware. Um, so a really great split between the so uh, you know, new to coding, new to networking on either side. That's that's also you you actually address it from both sides, right? For developers wanting to seek technology as a field, right? That you can come in and you can actually start with the networking one on one just to learn the basic fundamentals, right? Is that what you're saying? Oh, absolutely. And I mean, again, this isn't uh, I, I I'll full disclosure. This isn't going to teach you a CCNA level of of network engineering, um, but it's going to tell you what how a network works it's going to give you the background because again you know it, it, it's like with any application or anything that you're going to be you need to understand the technologies that it's going to be running upon um and often we have people that know the technology in and out but have never touched a line of code so we 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 have a bridge for you on this side of the screen but if you've only coded and never and and, and have no background in networking we try to give you a hand here too. That's awesome. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. So you say this is really zero background, or is there something you should have taken a look at before? 
Um, I am, uh, well, I, I will say for the networking 101, it's, I, uh, uh, the best thing to do is to know, to know about, like, it's important to know about essentially what a net, the, what a network is. It, right. But if you don't even know what a network is, if you don't even know what a router and a switch are and how they work together, um, we actually do cover that in our networking basics. But, um, uh, I will say this is as, this is as good as anything if you're really starting at zero. Um, if uh, to look at the networking side, if you've never touched uh, anything, never touched a hardware uh, a networking box, um, you know, maybe you've only ever set up your in home internet, this is a really great place to start because it, it shows you kind of how uh, networking technology works, how information travels across the network. Um, but on the coding side, if you've never touched a line of code, um, and as an example, I'll just actually open up this learning lab right here, Intro to Coding and APIs. Nice. Um, this is legitimately bringing it all the way down to basics. Um, the only prerequisite um, uh, that we ask is that you have an open mind and that you are really interested in kind of engaging with engineering, like really, really seeking out um, uh, an understanding of, uh, of this type of information. Um, you could come here with absolutely nothing. And that is awesome. Okay. okay. Great. Um, and again, we really kind of take it at like a very basic level. You'll notice here too, we even have instructions at the top of every one of these labs, like how to set up your computer. We do not take anything into, we don't take anything for granted. Like we aren't assuming that you're gonna come here and you're gonna be like, oh yeah, don't worry about it. I know how to set my computer up as a dev station. Um, we, actually, uh, the, we actually tell you if you have to do anything to complete this lab, we actually show whether this lab has requirements or not. So this one doesn't. All you have to do is read it in your browser. Um, but another lab that we have that's over here, which is a brief introduction to Git, which is on that kind of journey of learning, we tell you exactly how to set up your computer. So even if, if it's just reading, we let you know what you need to do. But if you have to set up your, for, for the very first time, your development workstation for this, for it to accomplish a lab, we always go in, into detail, step by step, showing you how to do it. Um, so you're never, you're never, we're never asking you to suddenly have knowledge that would be impossible for you to have. We're always assuming that, hey, you might be starting at an absolute, you know, brand new, you've never touched anything like this before. Um, so again, I would say the only prerequisite is that you're excited to do this. Um, and uh, Ryan, uh, so a question here. I think I see that uh, DevNet uh, in, in promoting uh, like programmability and networking, they started with Python and, and as a programming language in, in Code 101. Is there any reason that Python was uh, was the first choice to to be in in start uh, with uh, with in coding uh, or teaching coding to engineers and um, and uh, what about on, for example any other languages as well that uh, in in the pipeline? I would say that um, there are other languages, and we even have uh, uh, labs that that do kind of refer back to other languages or or even a variety um, uh, of different like open source technologies too. Like we, we really do cover a lot of different things, but I will say that the, the we are often asked like, why was Python selected? And this really came down as a Cisco decision, which was there had to be a standard that we started with first. And, um, and this even came in, uh, this even happened when we were looking at like, you know, other standards like API standards, like REST versus SOAP and, and all of these different choices that we had to make as Cisco. And so when we started um, working internally at Cisco, making strategic decisions, it was decided that Python was going to be the language um, that we led with. Uh, you'll find other labs where we do refer to um, uh, other languages, other systems. You'll see things like, again, or even even different API styles. Uh, you'll see things like even on, you know, Ruby. You'll you'll find a host of different things that we have. But I will say that um, Python was that main choice that we made. And it even follows us now. Python is the basic is the basic language that's in the DevNet certification program. Awesome. Um, 
for software skills. No, that's that's fine. I'm just um, trying to trying to comment on the prerequisite part for both networking one like for coming from the networking um, background or people coming from the development background. Uh, do uh, uh, my question is: Do you think that uh, uh, Linux administration or basic Linux skill set will help in in both for both you know side of the of the you know career spectrum go, going to DevNet and going to coding for network uh, as a like coding for network uh, networking and uh, and and also will help the future of the network engineer or network engineering in the future. So. Oh, that is a great question. Um, and you might have also seen this here too. We're actually assuming that some people might be coming to us looking to set up a Linux workstation. Um, I'm uh, as I'd like to answer that question in two parts. First, I think that your one, if your question is, if you are coming with like a Linux background, would that be a help to you as a developer? I'm going to say any type of coding experience will be a help to you. Um, and as a personal note, um, I started really simple. I actually started in web development. Um, in fact, I used to work on Cisco.com web pages. Um, and even even that type of experience, coding up web pages, um, that has an uh, there are applicable lessons that you learned there. Um, uh, just even in deployment alone, like deployment management of code, um, that are applicable as you move into ser more serious forms of development. Um, so I'm going to say that if you're if you're coming with that background, it is definitely going to be a help. But it isn't a prerequisite. If you really are coming and you've never touched a line of code, not even even done any type of web development, um, you can still start here, and you'll you'll still find the things that you need. What what you'll probably see out in the community, right? And 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 you guys have have heard you know a lot of information just trickling through the community, right? Um, there's other tools out there like Ansible, like you know, um, uh, uh, and Kubernetes, you know, things that are Linux based, you're going to see a lot of this stuff in, in production environments, right? Um, you're going to see a lot of uh, even automation, automation kind of trickle back to the Linux, the world of Linux. Uh, you have cron jobs, you get to be able to schedule things of that nature. So I do think that everyone really that's scripting should have some basics on, on Linux, right? And Linux command line to be able to schedule a job, a cron job, or to, to even be able to administer your scripts because executing the scripts is very seldom it's going to be done from a Windows platform, right? You're going to be doing it from a production, hopefully a Red Hat box or, or something. I don't mean to promote Red Hat, but some other production uh, Unix type device. So I, I what I've seen in the field, you need some kind of skills to be able to do that, you know? Um, so that's just my answer, Abdel. You know, just to take it kind of a little bit further to some of the other Cisco Learnings okay. courses okay. like um mp desi mp dev kind of spend a good deal of time you know working through the linux setup and you know obviously a lot of this stuff is a little more native to linux as a plat you know as an operating system so yeah make, especially it kind of makes sense yeah. exactly or just exactly. get a mac man just mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. come to the future <laughs> yeah so so right do, do you have uh linux also covered in devnet or can, do you have some some hints on where to look for more if you want to learn linux uh, as well actually what i can do is i can show you this so here let me actually show you so in, after our start now area we actually have um our learning tracks that are right here and so you can actually find a host of different items that are available and if you wanted to find anything that was related to Linux, for example, you can actually go to our search area right here, and you can actually find everything that we have, every um, every lab that we have, whether it's from the setup to how you can use it for event monitoring, um, all of these labs that are actually related to, that are just right here. Yeah, yeah cool. Okay. And even if I remember correctly, there's a couple of labs that actually walk you through setting up the Ubuntu a uh, server that's on DevNet. So there's a lot yep. of information. In fact, that one is right here. That's a lab that I've actually started. And you can see this right here. And again, just like 
even if you are starting this lab, we will tell you the prerequisites, right? Of, of what you would need before you started. Um, uh, and again, we'll tell you what, it, like, it, we're not, we aren't assuming that you are, are coming with any pre-existing knowledge. So if you, even to look at how to set up your computer, this mm -hmm. lab will require you to have internet access. Uh, you're going to need to be able to engage with the internet to pull information down. Um, we actually mm -hmm. go through all of this type of, uh, all of this in every single one of our labs. Um, this is a, a really good example uh, to, to uh, Derek's point. And I think, I think as well, uh, Ryan, um, uh, there, there, there is, there is one good section in, in NB Desi course that uh, Rick was mentioned is about Linux primer. And they and, the, and 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 there was a good job put in that place to to uh, to give the foundation about Linux Linux administration uh, itself as a prereq before going deeply into the coding and programming in Python. Um, uh, maybe we could um, uh, yeah as a as a you know suggestion or proposition if that can be open in on DevNet as well it would be. That would be great to have a to have a Linux primer section for people who want to learn about Linux as part of the of the curriculum or learning map. That's actually a really great point, mm -hmm. and it it brings me to something else that I should uh, that I honestly should have opened with, which is all of these resources that we're covering on DevNet are free. Um, the, they're available to anybody to take, but this is also something that we like to work with our community on building. Um, so when we have uh, um, people come, in, in fact, often we have learning labs that are built because we get a request in saying, it would be great if we could have X, Y, or Z learning lab. And we've worked with you know internal experts, we've worked with experts in the field, we've even worked with Cisco yeah. partners to build some of these labs, even to build new sandboxes. Um, based on a perceived need from the community. Um, DevNet is like a living, breathing thing. Um, so we are always looking for that type of feedback. If there is a lab that we can work on, um, or if there's inspiration that someone sees from like an existing course that we could maybe even build off of, um, where, where it's like, oh, hey, I learned a lot here, but I'd love to even do more. Can DevNet help? Um, we love that type of feedback, um, and I think that there is a there on, on every single one of the DevNet pages. You'll see on the bottom of the screen there's a little section that says "Chat with me" or, or "Chat with us." Mm -hmm. uh, you can I, that's where you can reach out to us. Our Dev advocates are inside of that. Uh, it brings up a WebEx Teams room. We are eager to hear that type of feedback. Awesome. Okay. Um, awesome. Awesome. Okay. Excellent. Hey guys, this is a good place to. Uh, to actually end, and we're going to continue uh, uh, with this journey in the next session. So I just want to say thank you, Ryan, and I'm going to see you on the other side.